Hello there. Today I want to talk about language acquisition and especially how I think that the program Link Q, which follows the theory of Stephen Krashen, that is this guy in this charming video here, is the best way to learn a language. Of course, a lot of people are skeptical because they say, nah, I do it my old way by not doing it and getting frustrated, right? Uh, so you often suggest people a new thing and they are very skeptical, which is part of human nature. But I hope I can convince some people, and especially I make this video for uh, two of my friends, RJ and Brandon, and I also want to greet my mother. So <laughs> let's start. So what is Link you about? What's the core idea of it? And it actually goes back to this little video from Stephen Krashen on language acquisition. It is a very old lecture from maybe the 90s, but or maybe mid 90s. But he explains very well how we have already tried everything in language learning. And he says, the last resort is actually comprehensible input. And let's listen first to what that means. And now I'm going to share with you the most important thing I have learned about language. Probably the best kept secret in the profession. We what is it? What is it? We acquire language in only and only we one way. We acquire language in one way and only one way. When we understand messages. We call this comprehensible input. We acquire language when we understand what people tell us. Not how they say it, but what they say, or when we understand what, they, what we read. Comprehensible input, in my opinion, has been the last resort of the language teaching profession. We've tried. And I completely agree with this approach. I mean, there are a lot of questions what that entails, and it, for the most part, means that you need to study something that you comprehend. It cannot be too simple, cannot be too complicated. Now, what would be too simple if you study single vocabularies with, let's say, flashcards? You just repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, I have done that myself for a very long time. I mean, English is not my first language. I learned different languages. I had to learn Latin. I studied old languages. And I went through all these messages. Uh, through all this method, these methods. I also did that on Chinese, which is my next goal. But now I see how inefficient I have been with these methods. And there's a lot of research that shows now when you try to memorize vocabulary, and even if you do tasks and drills where you train this vocabulary, you may reach something that is called the illusion of competence. That's a familiar concept in education. So it gives you the illusion that you have mastered something. But in fact, you are still not capable of having a conversation, communicating with someone. Maybe you can go to the bakery and say, I want to order this and people understand you. But as soon as they respond, the communication breaks down. And I think that Steve Kaufman's program from LinkQ actually utilizes the method of Stephen Krashen. So let's listen first what he thinks is very important for this method. So this here is Steve Kaufman. And yeah, maybe I just show you very briefly on Wikipedia who he is. Um, so here we have uh, on language learning. Uh, Kaufman has spent over 50 years studying languages. He advocates total immersion in the learning process. He places great emphasis on absorbing the language by reading texts and by not wor worrying too much about unfamiliar words, believing that they will gradually be acquired through repeated reading. So this year is really, really important. Reading secures that you read words in different contexts. It's my own theory. I say you have to have heard a word at least in five different contexts, have comprehended it in five different contexts, and then your neurons have connected or something, your synapses say hello to each other, and then you have really acquired the words, the word. And now it's clear why we don't learn it by flashcards, because words are not tags that we put on objects. There are more like 
small little <laughs> connective organisms that reach out to other words and create meaning. And that's the major point. And when you read, you understand that the smallest unit of language is maybe not a word, but a sentence. So he, though he supports using techniques such as flashcards for memorizing difficult words, most of his learning time goes into listening to native speakers and reading text. Listening is the other key component. And the reason for why I think that is so important is that you get fairly quickly used to the standard tempo of the language. And this is always the problem when you learn a language. There are people who have expertise of that language for over 30 years using it the whole day. And basically it is like you are going to meet Jimi Hendrix on the guitar and after one year practice you try to compete with him. You can't. But how do you get into that? Well, I don't think that the slow build-up approach that many people emphasize works. By the way, I also play piano. Some people say uh, I play that on a fairly proficient level. And I have seen a lot of people who always emphasize like this building block technique, but then they never make it to the complicated pieces. Sometimes you have to jump into the water. And I think this is also part of the technique, but it's done systematically. Uh, so you get more and more curious how this technique actually looks like. Um, he is particularly fond of reading books on the history of country or region of the language and he is learning in the native language. He prefers not a fixed daily schedule. Well, these are all other questions. Maybe that's not so important, but let's see what he can do. Uh, so he started le to learn Russian, uh, his ninth language, when he was 60. As of 2024, he has an understanding of 20 languages, though his ability to speak and write in them to a highly proficient level varies considerably. He has stated that he rarely writes in languages. And look, let's look at the languages. It's French, Mandarin, and Cantonese. And they say it varies differently. So how much is he polyglot? There's a lot of debate on these internet polyglots who then just learn some sentences and respond and make it look like they can speak 30 languages or something. But there are people who are legit polyglots and who are tested. And I've seen interviews with Steve Krashen in Mandarin and in Cantonese. Um, in Cantonese, I haven't seen it, um, but I asked native speakers in Mandarin and they said, especially the tones are so correct. It's, it's surprising. He almost sounds like a native speaker. Uh, some smaller grammatical mistakes, but it's not grave and he can fully communicate in that language. So at least for this very difficult language that is not related to Indo-European languages and is therefore more difficult, he is proficient. He's more than proficient. Okay, so this is the important part to know who he is. Now let's listen to what he has to say. Then as soon as I could, I would get into interesting content. How soon I can get into interesting content will depend on the language. Uh, but I would start trying and I would do it at link, obviously, because there I can look up every word, I can save words, I'm used to that, that's my favorite sort of learning environment. But my, my sort of modus operandi is to get into a situation where I can listen and read because listening in combination with reading is so powerful. And so for an initial... So this is interesting, right? Because what does not play a role that many people put emphasis on? Speaking and practice. Many people say, ah, school is so stupid and our language classes are so stupid because there's no practice. No, that's, that's not the focus here. The focus is first building passive listening and reading vocabulary. By the way, by reading, you can expand also your native language vocabulary tremendously. So, and once you have passive vocabulary, it is a next step to activate that vocabulary. But that's a different challenge and it is a way easier challenge. And it cannot be done if there's not enough passive vocabulary available. And don't listen to all these internet gurus who say, yeah, we apply the Pareto rule 
80-20 with 20% of the effort, you gain 80% of the results. Well, see, when you can fly a plane to 80% accuracy, and I just said that to Brandon and RJ, like, what does it help you if you have a 20% plane crash um, probability? And that's probably the case of language. You will experience with thousand vocabularies, with thousand uh, words, which is not difficult to learn, you will experience one crash after the other. Communication will break all, down all the time. Because in order to have a fluent conversation, you need to have 95% understanding. Some people even say 98% understanding of the words that are used. And so it does not help you a lot if you use 2000 words and you create questions, but you get responses that include for a normal everyday conversation about 6000 words. And in order to be completely fluent, you need about 10 to 15,000 words. So that, that is the reality that we are facing. And yeah, it's true. 80% of all conversations are 1,000 words. Great, right? But then the rest of the 20%, they still matter. And on these 20%, there are like maybe 10,000 words that equally occur in like the everyday communication. Maybe 10,000 10, is too, too much, but maybe four, five, six thousand. 5, 6,000. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's why we make these horrible experiences when we learn an unfamiliar language. I mean, if we are native English speakers and we try to learn Spanish, of course, there are a lot of cognates, right? And especially when we get to the higher abstract levels, communication, communication, right? Uh, that's not so difficult. But if you learn an entirely unrelated language like Chinese, where you even have to learn singular terms, crashes programmed. So now, how, do, how does that technique, technique work? Let's look at the program uh, LinkQ, which I really recommend. Uh, so you see here uh, that you have a library. So I have it on my computer, but I usually use it on my cell phone. And there are so, it has so much usability. You can get familiar with the idea of Stephen Krashen and Steve Kaufman, which I really recommend first. And then think about how you want to use it, because I don't say that I have the king's path of how to use LinkQ. But LinkQ makes it easy uh, to use the method of Steve Krashen. And if you believe in that method, then you will really appreciate LinkQ. Uh, let's look. I haven't actually done that yet. So uh, he says we should do something that interests us, right? So I would maybe start with um, philosophy. And then I see, see here that I don't, new words are 94, which makes about I don't know the number here, 25%, probably 25% words. And 37 words I have already heard. So this is probably beyond my comprehension, but I may want to go through and study it. But maybe that's not the optimum here uh, that I want to study. I wonder if I type it in uh, Chinese, if it gives me better results. Let me try that. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, it gives me better results. So I have articles that can also be imported. The program sometimes is a bit buggy. So it has the advantage that you can also read news articles, right? Um, I don't know if this here is any controversial content, maybe. Um, but you see here when you have newspaper articles, well, how many words do I know? And the good thing is once you start reading, and I also, by the way, I also started reading English. I, I read now uh, in 80 days around the world uh, from what's his name? Uh, Jules Verne, right? Is it from Jules Verne? I think so. And I mean, there are words that I've heard before, but I never learned their meaning. And now I actually go through the English language. And I guess in two or three months, I will see how many words I'm capable of managing in English. And then I can really surgically expand my knowledge in fields by reading novels and seeing how many new words are in these books that I don't know yet, right? So it is a big plus. Now, I'm saying like, there are so and so many new words here. Let's see this or this year, three new words and 43 uh, words that I still have to learn. 
It writes link queues. Maybe I misunderstand, but I don't think. And 96 known words. So it gives you a percentage, right? 2% new words. So this would be an optimal article that I could read. I will look into one in a second, but first things first. So I see here, uh, I know about 74 words uh, in German, my native language. <laughs> well, obviously I didn't use the program yet. But I know 4,619 words in Chinese. And this is quite surprising because I'm still not able to communicate. And interestingly enough, when I do HSK4, which is the standard Chinese test, I need for the level to reach intermediate level for the test, I need about 1,200 words, which includes characters. That makes it a bit more difficult, right? But here, I would be intermediate for link queue. I think it's way more accurate because look, they say, uh, they don't say it here. I saw it somewhere. I'm still on the beginner two level, I believe. I'm still a beginner, like almost reaching the intermediate level. Now, what I can do, maybe that's why I didn't find more texts on philosophy. I can here for the search bar, I can say which level I want to choose. I have chosen intermediate two. So then I can maybe select more for my interests. But of course, when I go to advanced, I will get way more unknown words. So maybe I should even reduce it and say, well, I first just focus on these texts so that I have less new words. But you see, it's still a lot of new words, right? And um, yeah, good thing is I can also look up the statistics, which words I've already learned. Let's do that in a second. Let's, let's look at how it works when I read texts. And uh, let's go here to a bustling market. Well, this has a lot of unknown words. Let's, let's go here, slow Chinese. I mean, this is adopted from other content from the internet. I guess they bought it somehow. Quen. And Quen. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there are different, I can, I can change to sentence view. There are so many functions. There are so many functions in this program. I, I don't have an overview, right? We have here, uh, Sheng Ming. I, I always thought it's pronounced Sheng, Sheng Ming. Let's listen. Sheng Ming. Sheng Ming, okay. I, I actually had a wrong uh, pronunciation. I can listen to the whole audio. <laughs> What a stupid intro here. Yo guy gay dajia jiashaoguela. Native speakers, let me say something about the listening in a second. Uh so Sheng Ming uh Jo Xiang Yi Tiao Da He Sh R Ning Jing Sh R Feng Kwang. Okay, so I think I mean I read this text already, right? So uh, life uh, seems often like a river. On the one hand, I know Feng Kuang is crazy. Feng Kuang. And uh, Ning, Ning, Ning Jing, An Jing, probably, probably calm and rich or something. So let's, now I can just like click it and then I see Ning the meaning. I'm, usually I do it peaceful, okay, calm, I said. Usually I do it on my cell phone. Right, and I I know sure R she is time right R is something like more like or more over or, or, um yeah I she so, I. Oh, from time to time okay I can be more uh, precisely right Xian she um Jiao Xiang Yi Ba Jiao Suo Ba Wo Kun Zhu Wu Fa okay so. You see, this is like an unknown text. And what happens now is, so these are all words that I have already heard before, blue. So now I can say, well, how familiar yeah. did this word sound? I can say, oh, yeah, it's all kind of familiar here. Uh, mi yang. That sounds like similar or something. Mi, like rice, I don't know. Enigmatic, okay. Guess the wrong, uh, guess the wrong meaning. But then I can say, ah, not familiar one, right? Uh, let's see whether I find something. Jiang should be communication, right? So it's a Jiang Wa. Um, Jiang. Jiang. Uh, get will. Oh, okay. Jiang Lai. Future, right? Okay, I forgot that. <laughs> I don't know anything, right? What you doubt? What you the na zhong xing fu. Xing fu. Okay. I know I want uh, this kind of happiness, right? Xing fu. Of fortune, feeling happiness, right? 
就在那呃，在那偏呃更高的天空，天空，天空 ，an empty sky. Is it an empty sky? Let's see. I've forgotten. 天空 Sky. Okay. Sky without clouds. 呃，就在那偏那偏 It is a very high sky. I know. I want. This kind of happiness, Joe. I don't know how to interpret Joe. This is like a very a small particle that is often used.、Uh, so and now, okay, you see, I cannot really, I I don't really fully comprehend the meaning. And now I know on my cell phone I can actually have a direct translation of the text. I wonder where that is here on the computer.、Uh, show synchronized text. A、vocabulary list, close sidebar.、Uh, how do I get like I I can get a complete、um, yeah. I mean, when you turn a page, you can have an extra function that you say when I turn the page, I knew all the words, or you can also say when I turn the page. Uh, nothing happens, right? It depends a little bit on the settings. So there are a lot of settings that you have to get familiar with.、Um, that's maybe the usability is a little bit problematic. But I want to see, like, how can I translate?、Um, let's close the sidebar. Sentence view. Oh, translate sentence. Reality is like a shackle that binds me and can't break free. I mean, this is already kind of a complicated text, right? And、um, So let's see. I'm now interested in what the other translation was. Okay, well then, no, I don't know. I don't know those words. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Well, okay.、Uh, just for this video, I have now three words that I don't really know. I know that the kind of happiness I want is in the higher sky. Well, yeah, a too high sky, right? Tian was a little bit difficult. Tian. Tian. Sheet. Okay, so you see how that works here on this level. Not a very successful demonstration with a text that was maybe too difficult for me, right? So I should maybe look for a bit of an easier text, though there are not so many unknown words in that text. And so this is how you start, and then you have a further function where you can look up all the statistics. Let me see where that is here. Yeah, you can look in the vocabulary, and then you see all the words that you haven't seen. You can here、uh, put some filters on that you just want to see.、Uh, let's say the words that are familiar to you, right? So then I see this here, and then I can go through the list and see if I if I understand them.、Um, Yi Xiang, I think. Oh well. Qi ba shi sui. Okay, this is seventy eight. Years old, right?、Um, yeah. So and then I can also like have a review just on these words, right?、Uh, this is yeah, G.、Oh, okay, I didn't know this. Yeah. So there are a lot of functions that I haven't yet explored yet, but I think the main function is that you start reading texts and that you comprehend small texts, and this program makes it very Simple to do that, right? You can search for texts that interest you. You can read every day a different text, and the idea is that over time, by doing this every day, let's say you do it every day for one hour a year, you will learn the language. I, I believe so far. I believe strongly in that. I will try it for Chinese. I'm learning like now since maybe three months with it, and my. Chinese has improved、uh, significantly, and my goal is now to push it in June. I just want to focus on that, not June, July. I want to focus on that and push it maybe to seven, eight thousand known words. That's my goal. And maybe in two, three months, I have another video and say, "Hey, it worked!" Right? Okay. Last thing that I have to mention here、uh, that I've forgotten. It just comes to my mind.、Uh, once you read a text, it creates a playlist. And then you can listen 
to the texts. And Steve Kaufman said he looked into the lessons for some languages. He listened to some texts 40 or 50 times while he was doing other tasks. And uh, that was like that repetition made it then possible that he got closer to the language and got a really good understanding. Now, I think this is very difficult for Chinese because Chinese is not a European language. I think that this even works better for Spanish or French, where, or maybe your Brandon and RJ also want to learn German. Go for it. Okay, I have said that. I will put a referral link down in the description box. So if you sign up under my referral, I will become a millionaire. So, and if you don't want to use my referral link and say, no, I don't want Norman to be a millionaire, that's also fine. Of course, we all want to be internet millionaires because life would be much easier, right? So I, I don't have any grudge on people who do that. So I also don't have grudge on me. Okay, however, um, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope it helped uh, RJ and Brandon. And I also hope it helped the rest of you try the program. It's for free. I think oh, the price is about, I think, $8 a month for a year or something. And if you just try it for a month, it's like $15. But you can also try it for free, but then it doesn't have some functions. But yeah, I, I, I don't buy many subscriptions, but this one I bought because I'm convinced by it. Live long, learn more languages and prosper.